The Easter Gospel according to John the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' Jesus's head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up and placed by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw, and he believed. At, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and she wept. She bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying. One of the one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she has said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabun, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ is risen. He, he is risen, risen indeed. People of God, why did you seek the living among the dead? Because, because we, we were, were afraid. afraid. We, we were, were afraid, afraid of all that we, we have done, done and, and seen and, and witnessed. witnessed. Do not be afraid. He has risen from the dead. He has broken the bonds of death. He's alive and among us. The stone that sealed Jesus' tomb has been removed. The wrappings that held Jesus' body lie empty. The tomb lies empty. Death cannot hold Jesus, our Savior. And by Christ's mercy, death cannot hold us either. He died that we might live, and lives that we might never die. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed.
Yet we have not lived as Easter people. We are unaware of your promise, confused about your will, and afraid in the face of danger. Like Mary, we weep at the tomb, but do not recognize your presence. Call us by name, risen Lord, that we may know you with confidence. Whenever we are tempted to fear death, give us courage to confess your Easter victory. Whenever we are distracted by petty conflicts, keep our minds on your reconciling love. Whenever we are overwhelmed by the power of evil, reveal again to us your triumph over the destructive powers of oppression. Forgive us our sin, and let our lives be a testimony to your salvation, through your love, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen, church. God who raised Jesus from the dead has not given us over to death. In the name of Christ, we are forgiven so that we may live and have life abundant, and then we might abundantly serve God with our lives. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. Once
Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! The grace of our risen Savior, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he's alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. first reading on this Easter Sunday is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 10, beginning at verse 34. Then Peter began to speak to them, I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Alleluia, alleluia, a burning sun with golden beam, a silver moon with softer gleam. All praise him, all praise him. second lesson is from the Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 through 4. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above. Where Christ is, it is seated at the right hand of God. 
Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and when your life is hidden with Christ in God, when Christ, when Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Say, Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Boys, say Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, everyone. We are at our house, as everyone else should be, too, during this wonderful time. Uh, we are so happy that we get to celebrate with you. My son Wyatt is filming for us, and Avery is going to be reading it a little bit for us uh, in a few minutes. But today, for our children's message, I wanted to talk a little bit about emotions, because I think our emotions are running all over the place right now, and we can connect that in a little bit with how uh, the people felt when Jesus rose from the dead because that was not a common thing to happen like right now we're not in a common time of things we're used to so to help us today I made some little emojis I love emojis when I text and send emails and messages which I've been doing a lot lately uh, I've been using emojis to help let people know how we feel uh, there's the sick emoji which hopefully none of you are, and we are finding you healthy, afraid. Oh, I hate to be afraid, but sometimes something might scare us. Silliness, we have silliness in our house quite a bit lately being cooped up together. Um, a case of the sillies is a good thing. Sometimes we think or wonder or ponder or question. That's a good one. Oh, we get angry in our house too. Fighting happens as with all families, I'm sure. We get angry about things. Some things make us sad. Like I'm a little sad today that we don't get to see you in person, but very thankful that we get to uh, connect in this way. There is surprise. Hopefully you get to see good surprises in your lifetime and we have some happy surprises coming soon. Uh, loved. Hopefully we all feel loved during this time, especially knowing that we have God's love and forgiveness always, no matter what, and happiness. I'm happy to be with you this morning um, and happy to be able to share this message with you. So uh, Avery is going to read from us John chapter 20, uh, just as we heard in the gospel lesson which is exactly what it is. She's going to read, and I'm going to put up some emojis to help us understand maybe just how the people in the story were feeling at the time. Okay, Avery. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter, the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrapped in swine there, but he did not go in. Then Simon and Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrapped in swine there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in its place by itself. Then the other disciples who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them. They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener. She said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She, returned, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Robini, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. 
Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. Thank you. So a lot of different feelings going on in that story. Happy, sad, wondering, where did Jesus' body go when they last left that tomb there was that big stone in front of there and it took more than one person to move it uh, and so the stone was gone jesus's body was gone where would it have gone somebody had to have taken it but that wasn't the case because we have in the scriptures that promise that in three days jesus would rise again just like promised and he did he rose from the dead and he went to live with god and to fulfill that promise uh, not just his God, not just his father. He says, my father and your father, my God and your God. So we have that assurance that Jesus loves us, God loves us, um, and that everything's going to be okay. And hopefully, instead of feeling sad or angry, we can feel loved and be loved through this Easter season with the promise of God's love for all. He has risen. He has risen indeed. Ooh, I caught you off guard. I think we can do that a little better. He has risen. He has risen indeed. Oh, I think we can do better than that. I've heard you fight. I've heard us outside. Let's use our outside voices. He has risen. He has risen indeed. Amen. She's 
struggling with a nightmare that she can't put to sleep from the night before, and that she can't seem to wake up from either. We all know the dark night of the soul, where we lay awake wrestling with our worries, our pain, our struggles, our guilt, as the rest of the world sleeps. We go over and over the scenario in our minds. We think of what we could have done differently. We struggle with the injustice of things that we can't do anything about. We worry about the future and the fact that it is not ours to control. We grieve loss, the loss of jobs, the loss of relationships, the loss of loved ones. We lay awake alone in the middle of the night, longing that sleep will come, and it doesn't. Longing that morning comes and a new day comes, and yet the night drags on and on and on, and we are alone as the rest of the world sleeps. Mary is awake and alone in the early morning because she is living the, light, the nightmare of Good Friday over again. She watched her Lord Jesus die on the cross as a discarded chain criminal, and with Christ's death, her every hope for the future died as well. Mary can't sleep, so she gets up alone and walks by herself to the tomb of Christ, trying to make sense of everything. Every step of the way she grieves, and when she gets to the tomb, she finds it open. Someone has rolled the stone away. I imagine for her, the image of seeing the stone rolled away would be as jarring as it would be for us to walk into a cemetery and find a grave open and the casket standing with its lid ajar. She can't even bear to look into that tomb. It's too frightening, it's too scary, it's too horrible. And so she goes running back as fast as she can, back to the room where she was, back to her friends, back to the disciples. And when she gets to there, she says, they've stolen my Lord's body and I don't know where they put him. It's more than she can bear alone. Peter and the disciple that Jesus loves listen to what she has to say, listen to her hysteria, and they run, leaving the room behind, leaving poor to Strawberry once again alone. She follows them back to the tomb at a distance. They go, they look into the tomb, they find it empty. Everything is there, except for the linen wrappings. Not left behind helter skelter, but rolled up neatly, folded and laid aside. How odd. Is this the work of a grave robber? I've never met a grave robber before, but if I had, I'd guess that if they went to remove a body from a tomb, they'd probably take the clothes with them. And if they decide to leave the clothes behind, I can't imagine them folding those clothes first and laying them neatly aside. I imagine they left me left helter skelter all over the place, kind of like what happens when my four-year-olds rip off their clothes and head down the hall. Here and there everywhere. Peter and the other disciple take all of this in, and then they go home. I can almost picture the confused looks and the mixed emotions on their faces as they walk away. Surely, this is some terrible, cruel trick. But seriously, why the folded grave clothes? I wonder what they were talking about all the way home as they walked right past poor, sobbing Mary. They don't even bother to give her a hug or scoop her up and take them back home with them. We know why Mary, where Mary is this morning, don't we? Mary, I think, is in the place of my friends in Seattle. 
Their churches have been shut down three weeks longer than ours have. Their football fields are now full of tents that hold hospitals. Members of their congregation have the virus, and they are absolutely told to stay home. They have been in tears for weeks, while I have looked on at a distance and scratched my head a little. Because although we are dealing with the same virus, we are experiencing it in far different ways. My friends are grieving and I am perplexed. And in the middle of all of this, we are at times talking to each other and in the, in the same process walking straight past each other and offering each other very little comfort because we're in so many different places. We know where Mary is standing because we've all stood in her place. We all stand with her every time we grieve the loss of a loved one, every time we face the death of hopes and dreams, every time we pour out our deepest fears and frustrations of our hearts to others, to our closest friends, and they seemingly walk away because they, have not, they are not in the same place and they have no idea how to help console us. Grief is a very lonely place. And perhaps this year, we all know where Mary is standing in ways that we've never truly known it before. I have read this gospel text from John 20 over a hundred times, and I have never before been struck by the fact that the two disciples leave poor Mary sobbing alone at the tomb without bothering to give her a hug, without scooping her up and taking them home, her home with them. Every year when I've read this passage in the past, my imagination inserts the hug. My imagination pictures the disciples encouraging to Mary to go back with them and her shaking her head and telling, her, telling them that she just needs a little while longer. I imagine the disciples going home worried about everything, including inconsolable Mary. But this year is different. This year, my imagination sees Mary standing off in isolation and the disciples going home because they can't touch Mary and they don't know how to care for her. And she grieves by herself as the disciples scratch their heads and worry about a thousand other perplexing things as they walk away. Yet even in her grief, Mary is not exactly alone, not nearly alone as she thinks she is. As the disciples disappear around the path, Mary bends down and looks into the tomb for the first time. And as she does, she discovers that it's not empty. The place of ultimate isolation has been filled with the bright white of angels. Why are you weeping? <coughs> Yet, 
she is still isolated in her way. Jesus told, tells her not to hold on to him, because he has not yet ascended to visit the Father. But she is to go and tell the disciples, I am ascending to my God and to your God, to my Father and to your Father. I have always struggled with these words a bit. If I had stood in Mary's shoes, I would have given Jesus a hug and never let him go. That would have been my plan. Yet this, I think, is exactly the point that Jesus is making. He is not Mary's alone to keep. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And he comes to all of us Marys, each and every one of us, who lie awake in the middle of the night with our nightmares and fears, who walk alone to grave sites of our deepest griefs, who call our friends for help and watch them walk away from us, scratching their heads as they as we weep, who know deep down that we are loved beyond measure and yet know that our loved ones are not allowed near us. Christ has risen for all of us, all of us Marys, and all of us disciples, all of the world who even now has yet to hear the good news. He comes to tell us that we are not alone of any of us. He has opened the grave and opened heaven itself. And now, once and for always, we belong to the Lord who will never let us go. We are not alone in nursing homes, in hospital rooms, in empty offices, or even in our empty or overfilled homes at this point. Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. And although it may seem at times that everybody and everything in the world has passed us by and abandoned us, we live today and always with this great news. Christ is with us, and even our very graves. Because Christ has risen, sin and death and all that separates us from each other and from God has been defeated. We will rise because Christ has risen, and nothing not all of the struggles of the past, and not our current struggles today, not even death itself, can separate us from the love of God. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Hi everyone, it's Brinley and Dayton, and today we pray for um, the people who are tested positive for coronavirus and their families, that they stay healthy and that they stay safe in this time, and to just um, be positive during this whole um, thing that's going on. I pray for the friends that are healthy and they stay healthy so they can go to school positive and healthy. Ready? What do you pray for? Some Jesus have a cup like Jesus and climb up like a cup of milk and climb up a milk and climb up a tree. Okay, you pray for anything else? Mm -mm. No? Good morning. I pray for the healthcare workers and those they are caring for. I pray for all the scared, lonely, worried, nervous, confused, and anxious people during this uncharted time. I also pray that we find joy in the small things, hope in the uncertainty, and faith in others. Hi, good morning, everyone. At this time, we pray, and I would like to pray for faith, love and forgiveness all things that are so near and dear to our faith to our to our backgrounds i pray that we have faith that we will get through this whether it's financially or emotionally um i i pray that we have faith in our leaders have faith in our medical field i pray that uh we love one another as the love will endure all things. Love our neighbors, love our families, and that faith that things will happen and we will get through this, uh, we'll all be a part of that equation. I pray that we forgive. We forgive our families as we become impatient with them as we maybe have shorter tempers or shorter fuses, fuses to have a temper. Uh, I pray that we forgive our friends for comments, uh, thoughts that become expressions verbally due to the stress or maybe the anxiety of everything going on right now. Um, I pray that we forgive ourselves for things that we've done as we sit and reflect on our past. Um, I forgive that, uh, or I pray that we, we forgive one another uh, as, as our Lord and Savior Jesus died on the cross for our sins to be forgiven. Um, so that, folks, is, is what I pray for. Faith, love, and forgiveness now through this time period, on this Easter morning, and in the future as we go back to normal eventually. Um, with that, um, we also like to pray with those that we hold in our hearts, 
um, in our minds uh, silently at this time. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to pray. Um, and with that being said, Amen. Christ is risen! Christ is risen! He is risen, risen indeed. indeed! The peace Christ of the Lord, the Lord be with, be with you, you all. Peace of the Lord with you. And also with you. And also with you.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you forever in his grace and love. Amen.